So what are you going to make for Christmas dinner? We, we like turkey, but you know, we have enough turkey at Thanksgiving. What I usually make is a couple things. I'll make a ham, and I hope you'll look for that video. And then I'll also make a prime rib roast. So what we're going to do today is make a prime rib roast in this big easy oilless fryer. And what I've got here is a five pound prime rib roast. The butcher already cut the bone off and then they uh, tied it up or trussed it, whatever they call that. Um, and that'll, you know, I just, when it's all done cooking, I'll just be able to cut these and remove the bone. So this is a pretty simple recipe. Just going to take a little olive oil, wipe it all down. We're going to use this for a binder for the seasoning we're going to put in. We're not going to do any trimming. Just going to cook this guy as it is. Okay. Now, you can use your favorite beef seasoning. You could use salt and pepper. Um, let me just uh, wipe my hands off and then I'll show you what I'm going to do. One of the challenges of having too many things to choose from is sometimes it's hard to pick. So I'm actually going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to come over this with the layer of the Meat Mitch Steer Seasoning. This is a winter, Memphis in May. And then I really, really like in this stuff the Running Wild guys make, this steak seasoning here. The thing that you just want to be careful about is don't, you know, if you're using a seasoning, don't pick something that's high in sugar. For, uh, for me at least, for two reasons. One, I don't really care for a sugar sweet flavor on my beef. And then two, this Big Easy, you know, if you've used it very much, you will, you know already that um, high sugar content tends to get real, real dark in this Big Easy. And no need to do the bottom, right? That's just the bone. Now I'm just going to come back in with our steer seasoning. Just a light coating. And you know, you could actually go a little heavier than I'm going, right? It's a very thick cut of beef. Um, so no worries if you want to put it on thicker than me. Okay. Now I'm just going to let this guy sit here and come up to temperature. It's only been sitting out about 10 minutes. I'd like to come up to room temperature before I put in this big easy. So what I'll do is go ahead and start the Big Easy and let it warm up while this guy's uh, coming up to temperature. Big Easy's been heating up here for about 15 minutes. We're just going to put this guy down in our basket. Another thing I want to do is get a temp probe in it. I'm going to cook this guy today to about uh, 127, 128. Most folks will say that that's closer to rare than medium rare. But the last time we cooked one of these in here, we took it up to 130, and by the time it was, uh, you know, we pulled it out and let it rest, it keeps on cooking, and it was a little bit past medium rare for our taste. So, just gonna put this guy in here. Like I say, it's been heating up about 15 minutes. Question I always get asked two questions. What temperature set this up? It's turned all the way up on high. All right, everybody always ask about the lid. It's 80 degrees here in Florida today. Don't put the lid on. If you do, the outside of your very, very expensive prime rib is going to get much too done before you get the internal temperature where you want it. Now, you know, if you live somewhere where it's extremely cold or you know, really windy, then you know, you might use it. But what I do always, I leave the lid off. And then as I start to get close to my end temperature that I'm targeting, I look at the, you know, the meat. If I want it, you know, a uh, darker color at that point, then I'll put the lid on. I don't expect we're going to need the lid at all today. Okay, it's been an hour, 45 minutes. One of my thermometers says 125. The other one says 130. That's a little worrisome. So I'm going to get this guy out, right? It's a, paid 60 bucks for this guy. I definitely don't want to run it. This guy's rest here about 10 minutes. The basket's nice and cooled down. You can touch it without burning yourself now. Okay. I can just grab it with these tongs. There we go. And I'm going to get him out and let him just rest maybe another 10 more minutes. I say we give this bad boy a try. I'm going to cut these strings off that we're holding that bottom bone on. Oh, it's still hot on the outside. Okay. Just 
Okay, you can see that bone is supposed to be cut all the way off. Let me just go ahead and get that guy off of there. Okay, I'm going to prop this dude up, get these strings out of the way, give it a cut. Alright, let's give this guy a cut, see what it's going to look like. So I don't know how well the lighting uh, gets at, but we are uh, a medium rare right here. Uh, you know, over here, we're, we're closer, it's, it's cooked much more. Right around this uh, fat edge, it's cooked a little bit more. But I think most folks would agree um, that we're looking at medium rare right there. Um, some might think it's closer to medium, you know, it depends on your uh, frame of reference. Okay, extra juicy, all beef flavor for sure, and it just sort of just kind of melts in your mouth. It's absolutely incredible. We're going to get a piece of that crust, you know, where we put the two different rubs. Let's give this a try. Oh yeah. You get that salt on those two rubs, uh, tasting a little, some sort of seasoning blends, probably the paprika. Um, that's in there, maybe the chili, not not from a heat, it's absolutely nothing hot or spicy about this, but just this additional flavor on that crust. I'm telling you, if you've got one of these big easy turkey fryers, these oilless turkey fryers, this is definitely a good way to make a prime rib, whether you're making it for Christmas or some other event. Hey, thanks so much for watching another one of our videos. We really deeply appreciate you guys supporting our channel. If you have any questions or comments about this video, just leave them in the comment section down below.